Boom, we are live, and thank you all so much for tuning in to a very special episode of the Sports Department Podcast. I am Stephen Bologna, and in just a moment, I'm going to be joined by the man of the hour himself, White Magic, Vito Milnicki Jr., one of the fastest rising and youngest professional boxers in the sport today. For any first-time listeners joining us here today, thank you all so much for finding us and hopefully you will stick around you can follow all of our social medias and subscribe to our youtube which can be found in the description below uh you also want to check out the description for all of Vito's social medias and a link to his merchandise store because he has some great stuff in there so you're definitely going to want to buy something and just keep up with his journey so far and what an opportunity it was to speak with him he is such a humble person he doesn't like to gloat or brag he simply brags with his talent as a fantastic boxer. He's been doing this since he was seven years old, as I found out today. He is on the track to superstardom, I truthfully believe. He has all the right people around him. He has a great supporting cast with his family, his trainers, his camp. He's with all the right people promotionally with premier boxing championships. This kid was is something special, and you're going to want to make sure to stay tuned for his journey. But might as well get this kicked off. I'm going to be joined by Vito Coming up right after the break. Thank you all so much for listening, and I hope you enjoy. No, Nicky has him in the corner. Kid stumbling, and now he's dazed. And down he goes. That's a knockdown, and it's over. Eric Dolly says that's it. Vito Milnicki back in New Jersey with a TKO. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Sports Department Podcast. I am Stephen Bologna, and I'm pleased to be joined alongside one of the most promising, hottest prospects in all of boxing, Vito Milnicki Jr., better known as White Magic. Vito, thank you so much for joining no, me. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. No problem. Um, how's everything going? You know, you're know, you fresh off of a second-round knockout in your last fight yeah. uh, just a few weeks ago. Big win for you in your yeah. career. You know, how, how do you feel? Yeah, I mean, I'm feeling great. I just actually got back from the shore, um, just taking some time, let my body recover, probably take two weeks off. And then uh, get back to the gym. But we had a grueling eight-week camp. And uh, I think recovery is just as important as the fighting aspect and the training aspect. So letting my body recover and then we're right back to work. You know, that was a it was an interesting fight for you because it was supposed to be the highly anticipated rematch yeah. with James Martin. And then he misses weight. Yeah. And then you, you take on Noah Kidd on, on, you know, on one day's notice. How did you kind of, you know, prepare for that? You know, obviously you're training for James Martin, like you said, for eight yeah. weeks. And then the day before you got to prepare for a whole new fighter. So what was that process like? Yeah, um, I think it all just came down to my preparation. I was so prepared that it didn't really matter who was in the ring with me. Um, but um, I was definitely hoping it was James Martin across the ring because I know how the fight would have went that night. He got me on my worst night that on April 17th. And uh, like I said in the post-fight interview, I'm going to move past him. He didn't do his job. I did mine. I came in on weight, so... Um, it was definitely when I found out that I'm not, I wasn't fighting him, and I was fighting Noah Kid. It was really just like, all right, let same same deal, go get yeah. the job done, and uh, we got it done in the second round. Yeah, I mean, props to Noah Kid for taking the fight, yeah, but he absolutely. he didn't look like he belonged in there nah, with you at all yeah, that night. Yeah. Um, you know, I kind of want to just touch on it a bit. You know, you took your first professional loss to James Martin. Yeah. You know, how did how did not not how how to make you feel, but how did you kind of bounce back from that because. You know, everyone loses unless you're like Floyd Mayweather, yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. So how did you learn from that experience? Um, really, like in anything I do, I don't really, I don't like to lose. Of course not. So I'm not, like I'm a compet, like I compete with everything, whether it's basketball, whether it's a video game, I don't like to lose. So um, my whole team's competitive edge is like second to none. Like we're all like, we want to, like winning is our only thought when we're going into the uh, ring. But uh, I think it all just came down to preparation. I had four weeks to get uh, prepared for my first fight for the fight against James Martin. Uh, coming off my February 27th win against Noe Lopez, and then we took two weeks off, and then we got a call to fight on that card April 17th. Yeah. So we had a four-week camp, and um, a lot of things happened. My coach got COVID, so I didn't have him for two weeks. I was yeah. training myself. And... Uh, Really, I didn't even fight in my weight. I fought at 152. We did a catch weight at 152. So, um, but like you, your question was uh, how, how did I? You kind of learn from. Yeah. So basically, Lamont Peterson was actually in my camp this time. Yeah. And he did talk a lot about 
preparation, proper preparation prevents poor performance. And I think it all comes down to that. When your body's prepared to go into a fight, you could perform at the, at the highest level. So, um, yeah, just I just learned that preparation is key. And it also must have been nice to see James Martin kind of get demolished <laughs> yeah, on the same yeah. card against Joey yeah. Spencer. <laughs> Um, I kind of want to just go back over your whole career. I'm just going to re- kind of read down your resume. Yeah. You know, you're nine and one as a professional. Your amateur record is 147 wins and 22 losses. Yeah. You're a four times junior national gloves champion, yeah. two times silver glove national champion. You were on the USA national team in 2017 and 18. You fought in multiple countries. You got a, a, a 10 and two international record. But the craziest thing about that whole resume is you're only 19 years old. Yeah. You know, when you when I read that resume, what kind of you know. What does that mean to you? And at what age, or do you remember a point where you were like, you know, boxing, I, I want to do, I want to be a boxer for yeah. my career? I would say, like, probably, like, like my whole life, I always wanted to be an athlete, a professional athlete. Because my first thing that I liked, to, I was a football player. And yeah. I stopped playing football going into high school. Um, and But I would say, probably when I was, like, 12 or 13, I was like, yeah, this is what I want to do. Like, just because... I'm, I was always a physical kid, but I started at seven, and then I was winning national tournaments, national tournaments. I was ranked number one in the country for back to back to back years, yeah. and uh, doing it at the highest level, and doing what I love. It's I can't ask for anything else. And um, the I mean I'm on an incredible journey right now. We have a long ways ahead, but um, I'm just blessed to be in the position I am. I know the story of, you know, you told your dad at seven years old, I want to box. Yeah. He took you to the Jamar yeah. Carter gym. It, it's a, you know, like you said, it's, it's been a crazy yeah. journey so yeah. far. But, you know, I see just superstar trajectory yeah. for you. Thank you. Um, now, your last fight was in Prudential Center, where your professional career started. Mm-hmm. And I had the ability to go, and you had thousands of fans yeah. there just for you. Yeah. You know, us Italians, we're big into family. Yeah. You know, what does it mean to see all these people coming to support you and travel for you? Yeah, I mean, just... The support was incredible. It was definitely electric in the arena, and uh, t- I definitely want to make the Prudential Center my home yeah. for the for my coming fights. Just because I know everyone will benefit. It'll be a, a crowd at each and every time, yeah. uh, and just the, even the undercard fights. They're not. They don't even have to sell tickets, but they're still going to get support yeah. from uh, my fans. So I'm just blessed to have a fan base, a loyal fan base around the world, around the country. And most importantly, in New Jersey. I'll also, make sure to put a description of all your merchandise, too. You got yeah. some great stuff. I yeah. know I'm going to buy you. stuff. Thank you. Um, what's always nice is, you know, for the outsider to kind of go into the mind of a boxer for the day. So what's mm-hmm. your typical kind of day look like? Diet, training, you yeah. know, when it comes to preparing for a fight. Yeah, so in my training camp, um, it's definitely a, a real strict regimen. Um, so we usually wake up either 4.45, 5 o'clock go to go on a run at 5 30 um come back have a breakfast shower rest then go to the gym at 12 well you eat before you go to the gym go to the gym at 12 for boxing and then uh come back rest shower and then uh go back to the strength and conditioning yeah. with uh my coach ray ray citrullo and uh next rep performance but um yeah it's three a days two a days a lot of eating healthy just it's just literally living it like that's it like and to be to be something in this i do believe that you have to absorb every aspect of this and do it the right way if not or if not you're gonna be it's gonna lead to a wrong path i give you a lot of credit because you know you're 19 years old Mm -hmm. you know you want to be hanging out with uh, Mm -hmm. with all your friends down the shore on the summer you know you're you're doing this for a living and i you know i give you a lot of credit for that um Recently, you partnered with Al Heyman, yeah. Premier Boxing Championship, one of the best in the business. Yeah. You know, what's that experience been like for you and him getting you these top fights? I mean, you you were on the Deontay Wilder Tyson Fury undercard, yeah. one of the yeah. biggest fights in boxing history. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, after my pro debut, once we uh, got the we linked up with Al Heyman and Premier Boxing Champions, it was that's like a dream come true. All the top guys are with Al Heyman. You got Floyd was with Al Heyman, yeah. Pacquiao was with Al Heyman Called now. Called him a second father, Floyd. <laughs> yeah, so um, the Charlo brothers, Deontay Wilder, just Errol Spence, all the top guys with Al Heyman. So to be a part of a stable like that and uh, be with the best of the best, and they treat me like family from day one. They treat me like family from day one. It's just like a dream come true, like really from when I was seven years old and now I'm with Al Heyman, the best in the business. Yeah. It's just... I'm just extremely blessed. 
you know, I, I've read in your bio that you used to travel with Shakur Stevenson yeah. and Javante Davis. Shakur Stevenson, big New Jersey guy as well, yeah, yeah. just like yourself. Are there any kind of fighters that you you looked up to where you, you model your game after now? Um, I'm a big fan of Roberto Durant, um, Canelo Alvarez, yeah. Andre Ward, Floyd Mayweather, obviously. But uh, I, I'm just a fan of the sport. I watch all yeah. the fights. It could be a small fight on the weekend or whatever. It might not even be on TV, but I just like watching boxing. Like, I'm yeah. a fan of the sport. And um, I think that goes back to just absorbing every aspect of it. Like, you got to... You got if you're like you could pick up certain things from different guys. So I think if you're studying the sport at all times, yeah. it can only benefit you. Absolutely, you got to yeah. be a student of the exactly. game. Um, in June, Lamont Peterson joined your team and yeah. two-time world champion. You know what was mm-hmm. preparing for that uh, last fight with him like? Yeah, so obviously with my head coach Muhammad Salam, we've been building, building, and building, and um, just adding, adding on uh, Lamont was just in, just more knowledge more of everything he's yeah. been in all the different t- situations in the, in the sport in the ring and outside the ring so having his knowledge around everything he says is something that you want to absorb so yeah when you're around him you just want to be a sponge and absorb everything he says absolutely and you know you talked about starting a camp you started a camp with a lot of really good young fighters mm-hmm. what's it like training with them every day and growing with them you know, you're all trying to accomplish the same goal. Yep. So what's that like? Yeah, so being with Keyshawn Williams, Nick Vatone, yeah. and Malik Nelson. Me and Malik grew up together throughout the amateurs. But, um, and Keyshawn. Uh, obviously, he was from D.C. We were from up here, but we all knew each other from yeah. the amateurs. But um, having guys around you that have the same goal as you and have the same, that have that work ethic and want to be great, it's just going to push you even harder each and every day. Every Every day in the gym is a comp like it's all competitive. Like and I, I like you we talked about I love competition. Yeah. And um we refuse to be outwork outworked and um that's it. We uh we definitely take pride in everything we do through our training camp. One thing that I, I love that you're doing at such a young age is you're taking the proper steps to building your brand, mm-hmm. which is crucial for yep. you know, long term life after boxing. Absolutely. You know, is that a focus for you just to kinda you know, you're only 19, like you said, you have a lot of boxing left, mm-hmm. but, you know, boxing, you know, life isn't a guarantee, yeah. so is it crucial for you to kind of build your brand young? So, in terms of, like, just... You know, I see you have a lot of sponsorships, yeah, yeah. like you have your merchandise, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely, just all that is another part of the game, like, it's a different part of, yeah. it's not the fighting aspect, but it's a different part of branding yourself, selling yourself, and advertising yourself. Yeah. Uh, I recently just started the YouTube, I'm going to start posting on Good. there, it's... It's just everything comes back to that one goal of you want to get to where you want to be. But if you have that that branding and that following, it definitely will make it give it even more like just it'll I don't know how to describe it, but it'll just help you get to where you want to be. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, like Ryan Garcia, you see him with millions of followers, millions of followers. He's not a world champ, but if you ask any regular household person who doesn't even watch boxing who Ryan Garcia is, they'll know who Ryan yeah. Garcia is. So it all just it's def- branding yourself is definitely important. Yeah. Do you have any goals over the next we'll, we'll put it over say a year that yeah. you that you're trying to accomplish or working towards so far? Yeah, um so we definitely want to get one more one more fight in before the end of the year. I was probably one of the most busiest fighters throughout the pandemic oh, I think. Three times, yeah. yeah. So I mean just learning, going into different training camps with top guys, um, just being, like I said, being a sponge with everything, uh, just building my brand. Yeah. Um, but most importantly, just keep stacking the wins, stacking the Ws. So, <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And it's, you know, you said you fought three times in, yeah. in, during COVID. I mean, what was that like? Because that's, yeah. that wasn't tough on, that was, wasn't easy on anybody. No, yeah. So fighting in front of no fans, obviously, like, I don't really, I don't care if, because in sparring, you're not, you don't have fans and stuff there. Yeah. You still got to do what you got to do. But, like, when you're in a fight, you really just don't even hear fans. Like, it's you're zoned out. You're yeah. like tunnel vision. So, it's like, a lot of people had trouble without the fans, but I really didn't. It was more of the bubble with the food. Like, we couldn't go out. We had to stay in our yeah. hotel rooms. Your legs could get stale, like, just laying down all day. So, yeah. um, I think that was the most difficult part with the COVID situation, obviously, we were all on shutdown and everything. Non-stop and, testing. Yeah, non-stop yeah. testing. So it was definitely different, but 
Uh, in Floyd's gym, it says a true champion can adapt to anything, and I think that did, the pandemic tested that on a lot of people. You know, we're looking forward to you, hopefully, like you said, locking down one more fight before 2021, the end of 2021. You said in your, in your last question, your, your post-fight uh, interview on Fox, you said, now's my time to learn and to grow for the next yeah. few months. What did you mean by that? Just, I'm young, like we talked about. Yeah. I'm 19 years old. Uh, a lot. Of, I'm not in a rush to do nothing. We're gonna take our time. Yeah. Uh, we were obviously we rushed into a fight with James Martin, and that that wasn't a good idea. So, um, just being a sponge, just learning. The more knowledge I get, the better I'm gonna be each time I get in the ring. And um, after my last fight, I watched my fight with James Martin probably a thousand times. I know every second what I did right, what I did wrong, and yeah. I know I didn't do a lot of things right, but. I was happy I knew what I did wrong because it definitely uh, helped me in the last training camp working on things each and every day, getting better, getting faster, getting stronger. Vito, I really can't thank you enough for just taking time out of your day. And, no, thank you, know, you. I appreciate it. Wish you the best. I know you're on Superstar Trajectory. <laughs> thank so. you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Right. That will do it here on this episode of the Sports Department Podcast. Thank you all so much for listening. We hope you stay around for future episodes. If not, we, we just appreciate any kind of support that you guys give us. Thank you to Vito again for sitting down with me and taking time out of his busy day. As I'm sure you heard, he's a busy guy. Um, we wish him the best of luck on his journey. We are going to connect with him again in the future on this podcast. Hopefully we want to thank his family as well for helping set everything up and giving us this opportunity overall. But again, just an awesome experience. I hope everyone enjoyed. Make sure to follow us, this podcast on all of our social medias, which can be found in the description, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Spotify, Apple podcasts, everything. Our social media is Sports Dept Pod. That's Sports D E P T Pod. Make sure to follow Vito on all his social media. And if you want to go buy some merchandise, go ahead. Go look in the shop. That'll be down in our bio as well. That's some great stuff. But for myself, Stephen Bologna, my co host, Jesse, Justin, Joe, and Stephen Clark, we all appreciate you all. Thank you to Vito again. And we'll see you in the next episode.